Hi, I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Laguna Hills, California at the All Pontiac Show and Shine. This is a yearly event. Features, of course, a lot of Pontiacs. They have them from the 30s on up to brand new here. We're going to take a look at some of these great Pontiacs, meet some of the great owners, and there is somebody very special that we're going to be talking to on the show today. So I want you to do what I tell you to do every week. Just kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. I have been to a lot of car shows since I've been doing the Vintage Vehicle Show. I've met a lot of Pontiac owners, people that restore them, people that rebuild them. And the thing that comes through over and over, especially when you're talking about GTOs, is a gentleman standing next to me, Mr. Jim Wagner's. Jim, I've been told repeatedly today, is the god of GTOs. That's quite a title you hold. Well, it's almost correct, as a matter of fact. It really is the godfather of the GTO. And, uh, you know, in, in a sense, I suppose that's kind of true. John DeLorean himself certainly was the father of the GTO. In working with the ad agency, we had an opportunity to really get close to the top-level management team at Pontiac. And in that capacity, both uh, Bunky Knudsen, who was the general manager earlier on, and John DeLorean, who at one time was chief engineer, they they learned in chatting with me that I really did have a pretty good handle on the market and more specifically on what we were trying to do with Pontiac in the market. Pontiac, as you might remember, was in the midst of a recovery at that time. They were trying to change their image almost completely and it was in fact the perfect time to make a tremendous statement in the consumer marketplace. 
And that was simply done by employing an old hot rodder's trick, something the hot rod community had been doing for years. Stuff a big engine in a little car. A car yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. The, the 389 cubic inch full-size Pontiac engine was put into the intermediate size Tempest Le Mans chassis. Thus, you know, the monster car was created. It was John DeLorean himself who wanted to call it a GTO, which stood for exactly what the car was. That's an Italian term, Gran Turismo Omologato, which is Italian for Grand Touring Homologated, which in effect means you built a car from parts that were all made by the same manufacturer, but designed specifically for other cars in their line. Well, the GTO, besides being such a powerful car and and what you just described, uh, a real high-performance car, they also nailed it on the design of the car. They are gorgeous from the day they hit the the showroom floor. People have been in love with GTOs, and I don't think that's diminished at all since they first came out. They just, you know, people just went crazy for them. When you think of some people, a lot of people talk about muscle cars, the first thing that comes to mind is a GTO. Once the car was created... John DeLorean turned to me and he said, all right, Wangers, it's up to you to tell the world about this car. Well, fortunately, at the time, I was smart enough to have been able to recognize this incredible mother load of buyers that were coming into the marketplace, the so-called baby boomers. Here we were with a car aimed right at that market. We did the obvious things. We put hood scoops on it. We put dual exhausts on it. We put bigger wheels and tires. We lowered it a little bit, you know. We made it look and sound like exactly what we were promoting. The idea of it being a muscle car really didn't uh, dawn on us at that early state. You know, that came on a little bit later. The Judge GTO, is that the top of the pecking order in the world of GTOs? Well, this happens to be my car. The Judge itself happens to be my absolutely favorite GTO of all of them. In fact, I think I could say my favorite Pontiac of all of them. And of course, no judge, in my opinion, is a judge unless it's carousel red, (laughs) which is the color we introduced this car in. Uh, It was, frankly, in 1969, kind of an outrageous statement. So were the pop art stripes that you can see. So were the uh, the emblems. This particular one made out of pop art uh, uh, approach. The whole concept of the car, in a sense, was sort of a spoof on what we were building all through this whole muscle car arena. But it also had the best performing engine that we knew how to build. So that's the, where my question is going next. What set the judge apart from the, the next one down on the GTO list? Well, the fact that it had this pop art striping, it had a rear deck spoiler, which was a stand up blade type spoiler. And if you can believe, in 1969, that spoiler was outrageous. Nobody had done anything like that, put a stand up rear deck spoiler on a production car. Probably the most important question on the viewer's mind. Who came first, the judge or Sammy Davis Jr. saying, here comes the judge? Well, that's a good question. There's no question about the answer either. Uh, There was the old laugh-in television show, and uh, part of that show was that character, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., on some occasions, that came on the show screaming, here come the judge, here come the judge. Well, John DeLorean, who was heading up the division at the time, you know, said, every time I turn on television, somebody's screaming at me, here comes the judge. Let's bring him a judge. So John DeLorean named that car the judge. He's a smart man. Deserves all the credit for it. Well, I think it's without a doubt you are the judge when it comes to GTOs. You're the man that knows everything there is to know about them. You have books out there. You're the guy that goes to authenticate a lot of these vehicles out in the country. And I would like to say it's been a pleasure to have you on the Vintage Vehicle Show and an honor. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. I enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you. Mickey Gill, you have done all right today. If I understand correctly, this car was finished yesterday. Today, you take the top honors at this Pontiac show, and you end up on TV the first time out. That's that's not a bad start for this car. Yeah, I just uh, last night finished the car, put the last screw in it, 
Uh, give it a wax job. Got it here today. Was hoping that it was going to drive well, and it did. Didn't let me down, and yeah, did good today. This is the end of a, a two-year restoration or a six-month, or how long has this project been going on? Two years. I Actually, I bought the car about two years ago on uh, the Internet, and uh, it was... Uh, I had it trucked over here, and it was all I expected it to be. It wasn't perfect, but took it all apart, every nut and bolt, and stripped it to the bare metal, and brought it back, and there she is. <laughs> it looks like a Concours level restoration to me. Do you feel that? It's close, you know. It's it's. I didn't do a frame off on it. It's a body on, but it's actually it's a forty five thousand mile car, so it was very clean to begin with. It was in a guy's collection for about twenty five years, and it was pampered, but you know it, it needed to be. Uh, done correctly like this so i basically just did it to it you know did new paint new chrome new stainless new everything well 49 to 52 pontiacs they're out there but you don't see very many of them this 49 pontiac i without a doubt i've never seen one this nice but without a doubt i can probably count on three fingers how many of them i've seen in car shows what kind of reaction do you get just because this car is so rare you know i don't know yet because this is its first day out <laughs> so I think it's going to get a lot of good reaction because I was looking for one for many years. I've got a 55 Catalina that's a pretty nice car, but I always wanted a 49 Fastback, and I found it. I haven't seen one since, and I'm always looking at cars and buying magazines, but it's, I think once it's out and people see it at some shows, they're going to, they're going to get the enjoyment out of it that I do because it's, it's a great car, great-looking car. And these had uh, flathead 6s in them, right? Did they have flathead 8s in them also? This is a flathead 8. So tell us the, that kind of power plant. Is it sufficient? Is it sluggish? Is it surprisingly uh, sprite? No, it's smooth. I mean, you can't even hear the motor running when, when it's going. It's just a really smooth car. I mean, when you're sitting at a stoplight, you have to even check to see if it died or not. But it, it's going. <laughs> yeah. You know what the coolest thing about these things are? The coolest thing about it? I think it's the light-up hood ornament there, probably, that Indian chief head. Well, we're in the same neighborhood, that that, that and the, the chrome stripe down there. That is so. I know Bunky Knudsen didn't like that and got rid of them, and I thought it was the coolest styling cue on Pontiac. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got a lot of unique features, this car. That's why I, I like Pontiacs, and that's why I chose this model to restore. I mean, the, it's got different bumper guards. It's got the... Actually, this was actually called the deluxe model because it's got the uh, park lamps. It's got the higher uh, bumper guards on it. It's got a lot of the deluxe trim. Well, Mickey, I'm walking along here. This jumped out at me. This is a gorgeous 1949 Pontiac. I think it's the only one we've ever had on the show. Certainly the one we've, only one we've ever featured. Thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle Show. You're welcome. So I'm walking along, and red jumps out at me. A red... It says El Camino to me, but it actually says GTO on the side. So, uh, Ron Lindemann, how did this come about? Well, it was a toss of the dice. I love Pontiacs, and I love El Caminos, so I figured, well, my love for Pontiacs is more, so I figured I'd build a Pontiac El Camino, and that's where it, that's where it all started. I've seen this done before, but I've never seen it done yeah. this well. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, 10 years in the workings, and I'm just finally getting it done now. This is the first show that I put it in, and I hope that there's other shows that I'll have it in also. I would think that most people in the car community know what's up here. They know that you've, you've badged an El Camino with GTO uh, badging, but how many people do you run across that either say, hey, they never made one of those, or, gee, I didn't know they made one of those? That's, that's the best part because then you have a little chance to kid with them a little bit and say, oh, you didn't know that Pontiac made an El Camino? And then, then you start telling them, oh, yeah, you know, I worked on it. And, Took me ten years to do it. The so from the cowl back uh, is El Camino. You have GTO in the front, correct? All car is GTO. Really? All okay. The, all the sheet metal, all the parts on it, the engine, the dashboard. It's all Pontiac GTO, and the frame, the whole frame is GTO. So the bed is El Camino. The, yeah, the inside of the bed is El Camino in the roof, and all the rest of the sheet metal is Pontiac. So the sheet metal on the outside is. It's all Pontiac. Okay, so what I've then I have never seen one like this because right. what I've seen before they put a front end on no, the. Uh, this is the whole thing. This is the whole thing. The frame, everything, engine, uh, dashboard, and all that stuff. So the big challenge must have been to make a bed out of the back of a GTO. Well, the bed was there. I just had to put sheet metal on and customize the sheet metal. Um, that that was that took the longest, you know, to do. And then uh, you know, put it on paper what I how I wanted the car, and uh, that's where it started.
So this is a 10-year process of, ten of year love process. and spare time. And it's coming to an end here now, and it's uh, kind of relief for me because I've been dying to get the car out, you know, show it. And would you tell your friend, when I was walking by and I said, is this your car? And he says, yeah, it's for sale, you want to buy it. And he gave me a number that made my heart skip a beat. It's like, okay, I'm out of town. I'm here in Southern California. I've got to get my hands on that much money because that's a real, real good buy on this car. But I understand from you, it isn't uh, quite for is, sale. This is my friend Rudy, um, he, he kind of pushed me to do things. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be having the car here today. Okay. Well, yeah. thank Rudy because he sold me the car for probably about a quarter of what it's worth. Uh, <laughs> very good. Right. He's got to be my salesman. Though. Thank you, Rudy. <laughs> And thank you, Ron, for being thank on the Vintage you. Vehicle thank Show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. I have a very, very sad story to share with you. Actually, Norm Callahan is going to share this story. This beautiful 1969 Pontiac GTO, I understand, has been sort of kind of restored about three times now. Three times. Tell us the story. Well, uh, my father-in-law originally bought the car when it was about a year old, and he he I was got ill, and uh, he gave the car to my wife. And unbeknown to me, my daughter just got her driver's license, so she was going out at night kind of driving around a bit without me knowing about it. And uh, Don't try this at home. <laughs> and uh, No, she, it wasn't her fault, but she got hit head on in the car. They called it total, and uh, we didn't want it total, so between her and I, we pulled it apart. She helped me on it. We pulled it apart. We restored it, and we got in another little accident with it shortly thereafter and uh, had to put new front clip on it again. And then two years ago, we were taking it to the uh, Nationals in uh, Pontiac, Michigan, and we got as far as, uh, as, as Needles, California, and the wind caught the trailer and upset the trailer and the truck with the GTO in it, so we had to start all over again. <laughs> so the, the Carfax uh, history on this has, has some interesting information on it? <laughs> it yes, it's a... Three-time restore. <laughs> I understand 69 GTOs are, if you're going to own a GTO, 69 is the one to own. Well, I think so. Uh, the, the 68, 69s were really a, 
a terrific car. A uh, little hard to find parts for the 69s as far as restoring, but the uh, 68s both. But uh, they're really mo uh, kind of a sought-after car, especially the judges, but this is not the judge. This is just the GTO. The recent auction history of cars like this, of course, every, all our viewers are aware of the incredible values that they've gone up on these things. Uh, it, it's been a roller coaster ride. There are people that get into the hobby for the money. There are people that get into it for the love of the car, and they don't care if it's worth 10000 or 210000 they, they really love it. That's the kind of people that, that, that I like. So yeah, I would never, uh, it would take a lot for me to have to sell this one because I've had it so long, and it was her dad's car. He was a great guy. Somebody that wants to get into the muscle car market but doesn't have a pocketbook to go out and buy something that's that's already done, where where would you recommend they enter into the hobby? Well, there's there's quite a few like Auto Trader magazines and some of the, some people that that advertise that the Pontiacs are really a fairly reasonable price. They're not overpriced. Um, they could start pretty easy in the in the twenty thousand dollar bracket but that probably beats about as low as you could go and your opinion on clones well <laughs> i don't appreciate clones but uh it's uh nice to see all of them fixed up and i don't know why anybody would want to clone them a le mans is just as nice as a gto and you could make just as fine a car out of that so i think they should leave in pretty much original so if somebody takes a Le Mans and turns it into a GTO and says it's a GTO, that's that's no good. That's but if they say, hey, I just had fun, I couldn't afford the real one, so I made this one, that's great. That's that's great. That's really great. If they, the love of the car, that's good. you know. But uh, to really change them, to clone them, no, I, I don't like that. Well, Norm, I can hear the sirens in the background. They're they're coming to get the people that pay way too much for these for the cars that, that aren't the real thing. So we better uh, call this to Thank an end. You. Thank you, Norm. Thank you very much.
Richard, thank you very much for the great deal you gave me on this 64 GTO station wagon. No problem. Very, very unusual. And thank you for watching the Vintage Vehicle Show this week. We have had a great time here in Laguna Hills, California at the All Pontiac Show and Shine. And I will see you again next time and the check's in the mail. Uh, okay. Yeah, trust me on that, okay? Have fun. All right, thanks. Thanks.